Good morning, sixth grade. Welcome to another week in lesson 26 in math class. Hopefully you're done with your power-up quiz on the back side from lesson 25. I'll rattle through the front side as we continue to name different uh, geometric shapes and angles and line segments. Number one's a segment, no arrows. Number two's a ray, one arrow. Number three's a line, both arrows. Four, acute angle. Five, right angle. Six, obtuse angle. Seven, triangle. Eight, quadrilateral. Nine, pentagon. Ten, hexagon. Eleven, octagon. And twelve is a regular polygon if they have all the same angles and all the same shapes. Your mental math, I would have went in A through H. A, I added $9.54. B, I multiplied by uh, 100, which would add two zeros. You could have wrote down 3,000 cents. Most of us write down $30. Subtraction is 93 cents. Multiplication is 222. Added together, I got four-thirds, which I simplified to one and one-third. Uh, two-thirds, I divide by three, get eight times two gives me 16. What number comes next? Five, 11, that added six, then I added four, then I added six, then I add four. So 21 plus four is 25. H multiplies 49 plus 150 times two, 100 divided by five is 20 plus five, 25 divided by 5 is 5, minus 5 is 0. 0 times 5 is still 0. Problem solving looks like this. The sum of two whole numbers is 17. Their product is 60. Find the two numbers. So you got a couple options, guys. You could check and, you know, trial and error at things. Here's what I did. I started over here listing my factors that multiply to give me 60, so I got the product. So your choices were one and 60, that doesn't add up to 17, 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 boom, that adds up to 17, I have my answer. I started with the multiplication one because there was less choices. The other thing you could have started with was the addition one, and you could have just simply started adding because these all add up to 17 to say which one multiplies to give me 60. Well, you could have skipped a lot of these guys because you know it had to have a 5 in it or a 0 in it. So I could have started here, no, Doug, give me 60. Yep, gives me 60, and I got that. So any way you look at it, guys, your numbers are 5 and 12. Two numbers that multiply to give you 60, add to give you 17. All right, let's get rolling on into our uh, lesson today. Our lesson is going to take it one step further than we did last week. Last week we learned how to divide fractions. Remember, that was stay, change, flip. So the first fraction stays the same. We change division to multiplication, and we flip the second fraction. We give the reciprocal, the inverse, if we're going to speak correctly. Today, they're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to switch it to mixed numbers. So all the steps are the same. It's just taking previous lessons of how do you do make a mixed number improper, how do you cancel, and then how do you divide and multiply. We'll just put it all together today. Very little to read. It says this. One way to multiply or divide mixed numbers is to first rewrite the mixed numbers as improper fractions, then we multiply or divide the improper fractions as indicated, like we've always done. They start with a word problem. Sergio used three lengths of ribbon. Each was two and a half feet long to wrap the packages. How many feet of ribbon did he use all together? So each one's two and a half feet, and I have three of them. Remember, multiplication order doesn't matter. You could have done three times two and a half. We make it improper by multiplying and then adding. So two times two is four, plus one is five. The denominator stays the same. Whole number is just over 1, so this is 3 over 1. I always look, can I cancel? No, I can't. So I multiply the tops, I get 15. I multiply the bottoms, I get 2. And now I have to simplify that through division. 2 goes into 15 7 times, that's 14. 15 minus 14 is 1, so I have 7.5. I believe we are working with the label feet. So I have 7.5 feet of fabric total. Number 2 is just multiplication problems. Here's the first one. Multiply. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11 thirds. Multiply. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3 over 2. And we're multiplying those together. This is a nice one. We can cancel out the 3. So 3 on the bottom is gone, 3 on the top is gone. I leave the 1s. Multiply the tops, get 11. Multiply the bottoms, get 2. Divide, it goes in there 5 and 1 half times. So 2 goes into 11 5 times and I have one left over. If you can't do that in your head, guys, that's fine. Write out the division, and you get five and a half. The second one for B was one and a half squared. I wrote it side by side, one and a half times one and a half. We make it improper, it's three over two times three over two. We multiply the tops, nine, multiply the bottoms, four. Four goes into nine twice, that's eight. Nine minus eight is one, four stay the same. I have two and one-fourth. 
Example 3 turns it into area for you that you'll do sometimes today. Find the area of the square that is 2 and a half inches long. So that's 2 and a half times 2 and a half. Make it improper. Multiply and add. That's 5 over 2. That's 5 over 2. And I multiply. That equals tops 25, bottoms 4. Divide. 4 goes into 25. 6 times. That's 24. 25 minus 24 is 1. I got 6 and 1 fourth. We are working with inches, so it's 6 and 1 fourth inches squared because of the area. Turn in the page in your math book. Example 4 says, the biscuit recipe called for 3 and 2 thirds cups of flour. To make half a batch, Greg divided the amount of each ingredient by 2. How many cups of flour should he use? So we're supposed to use 3 and 2 thirds, but I'm going to cut it in half, so I'm going to divide by 2. Make it improper. 9 plus 2 is 11. 3 stays the same. Remember, what do I do with the whole number? I put it over 1. So it's divided by 2 over 1. Now this is division, guys. So I stay, change, flip. Stays the same. 11 thirds. Changes to multiplication. Flips my uh, reciprocal of fraction. Multiply the tops, 11. Multiply the bottom, 6. Simplify it out. Divide, 6 goes into 11 one times, 11 minus 6 is 5, 6 stays the same. I believe we are working in cups, so you have 1 and 5, 6 cups, okay? Another way to think of this, guys, anytime I divide by 2, it's taking half of, it's multiplying by a half. So you can see down here how we did that. Um, anytime you read half, it might be easier to think multiply by a half, or it might be easier sometimes to divide by 2, depending on the type of problem we're doing. Last but not least is uh, example five. It was just the division problem. So I'm going to make it improper. That's three times three is nine plus one is ten. The three stays the same. It's divided by two times two is four plus one is five. And the two stays the same. Now it's stay, change, flip. So stays the same. Changes to multiplication. Flips to two fifths. Okay. Do not cancel, guys, until it's multiplication. So I canceled up here, I'd be tempted to take 2 into 10. Now that I flipped it, now I'm not taking 2 into 10, I'm taking 5 into 10. That's nice. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 1 is 3. That simplifies to 1 and 1 third. Okay, so guys, lots of times when you were doing this stuff, remember, when you divide by a number, this, what I started with, gets smaller. So make sure when you're done, you get smaller. Okay. Quick review, you got to make them improper. Multiply whole number times the denominator, add the numerator. If it's division, it's stay, change, flip. Last piece of advice is look for word problems that make you label square inches or cups or things like we did to make sure you have your label with it. Awesome. We'll get set to do uh, the problems. Sixth grade, here we go. Lesson 26, rocking and rolling. Number one says after... The first hour of the monsoon, 23 millimeters of precipitation had fallen. After the second hour, a total of 61 had fallen. How many millimeters fell in that second hour? So I had a total of 61. Sorry about that. I had a total of 61. Um, 23 fell in the second. 23 fell in the second hour. I want to first hour. I want to figure out that second hour. So I'm going to subtract total from first hour. Can't do the subtraction. Borrow. 11 minus 3 is 8. 5 minus 2 is 3. And we are working in millimeters. So 38 millimeters of precipitation fell. Number four. At the movie theater, Dolores gave $20 to the ticket seller and got $10.25 back in change. How much did her ticket cost? So she started with $20.00. She got $10.25 back after she bought her ticket. What was her ticket? It's subtraction. That becomes 19, 9, 10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 2 is 7, and decimal straight down, 9 minus nothing is 9. So her ticket costs $9.75. Number 6. Diagram the statement and answer the questions that follow. Begin by changing the percent to a reduced fraction. 40 percent, percent means out of a hundred, so I chop that off and I get four tenths. I'm going to stop right there and I'll show you why. 40 percent of the 60 marbles in the bag were blue. How many marbles in the bag were blue? Okay, I know I can reduce that to two-fifths, guys, but this I think is going to be easier for me to do the division. Remember, divide by my denominator, 6, multiply by my numerator, 24. 
Um, it just made the division easier for me, guys, because you chopped off those sinks. So I have 24 blue marbles for letter A. B said, how many marbles are not blue? You could do this one, guys. If four tenths are, six tenths aren't, you could divide by 60 again, get six. Six times six is 36. Many of us like the subtraction thing. I have a total of 60 marbles, 24 are blue. I'm gonna subtract to figure out how many are not blue and get 36. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, if you're capable of this move right here in your head and you know that your number is six, this might be easier to say, hey, just take six times six and get it. Uh, you're capable probably of doing that in your head more than this in your head. 36, not blue. Word problems, make sure you have labels. A, I'm sorry, this is B, this is A up here. Got a little sloppy there, hopefully you followed along. Number eight, this figure shows a one inch square, a smaller square that is seven tenths of an inch on each side is shaded. What fraction of the square is shaded? We're finding area, guys. That's today's lesson, really. I'm taking 7 tenths times 7 tenths. I suppose it's not today's lessons because it's not a mixed number. We're still multiplying. 7 tenths times 7 tenths. Multiply the top, 49. Multiply the bottom, 100. 49 out of 100 is shaded. Answer for A. B, what percent of the square is not shaded? Remember, percent means out of 100. We're already doing that. So I'm going to do 100 minus 49. That gives me 51. 51 out of 100 is 51%, letter B. Number nine, write 210 and 252 as products of prime numbers. Okay, so I have 210. I want to break that into 21 and 10. I want to break that to 3 and 7. I want to break that to 2 and 5. So the first one is 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. Now I have to do the same thing to 252. 252, I could divide by 2. I'm going to go 2 plus 5 is 7 plus 2 is 9. So I can divide by 9, guys. 9 goes in there 2 times. That's 18. That's a 7. Uh, 72 goes in there 8 times. Break down my 9 is 3 and 3. Break down my 28 to 4 and 7. Break down my 4 to 2 and 2. So the other one is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. Okay, now my job was to reduce these fractions. So this 3 is gone, this 3 is gone, this 2 is gone, this 2 is gone, this 7 is gone, this 7 is gone. On the top, I'm left with a 5. On the bottom, I'm left with 2 times 3 is 6. That was a lot of work to get the answer for A. Um, what is it as a reduced fraction? It is 5, 6. B says, what's the greatest common factor? The greatest common factor, guys, are the ones I crossed out. So I crossed out 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 7 is 42. So for B, the greatest common factor is 42. Awesome, awesome problem. Number 14. Arrange these numbers in order from least to greatest. So I look through there, I only have one negative number, guys. So that comes first. Then I have the number that's not positive or negative. That's zero. Next is going to be the fraction. That's five, six. Then would be the whole number one. And then would be the improper four thirds because four thirds would be greater than one. B, which of these numbers are whole numbers? Remember, Counting numbers start at 1, whole numbers start at 0. So 0, 1, everything else is a fraction. Whole numbers are not negative, guys. Negatives would be integers. So this is B, 0 and 1. Number 15, missing something in subtraction. I have to think, is it the first or the second? If it's the first, I add. So I'm missing the first, so it becomes an addition problem. I have 8 and 11 twelfths plus 6 and 5 twelfths. Add the tops. 11 plus 5 is 16 twelfths. Add the whole numbers. 14. Now I have to get to work on this one. I'm going to make it into a mixed number by dividing. 12 goes into 16 one time. I have 4 left over. So I have 4 twelfths. That I need to reduce by dividing by... Sorry, I was writing down the answer. Dividing by 4 gives me 1 third. Add the 1 to the 14 gives me 15. Get my fraction there so it becomes a mixed number. 15 and 1 third. So you can see the work they're starting to do to you when it comes to these addition problems. It's adding them. It's then 
an improper, so you have to make it a mixed, and you have to reduce. Great problem. Flipping over the answer key, your number 18. 18 says, missing the first in addition. Anytime I'm missing something in addition, it's subtraction. So I have 100 minus 58 and 1 third. Cross out the 100, make it 99. I'm working with thirds, so this is 3 thirds. That's a whole 1. Subtract gives me 2 thirds. Subtract gives me 1. Subtract gives me 4. 41 and 2 thirds. Number 19, find the area of the square. Well, a square is the same on each side, guys, so 10 times 10 is 100. We're working with inches, so it's 100 inches squared. B says find the area of the shaded part. That thing is cut in half, so I divide this by 2. That gives me 50 inches squared. They're teaching you that triangle is half of the area of a square. We're getting prepared for that lesson. Number 21, is a multiplication problem. 5 eighths times 3 tenths times 1 6. And we practice canceling. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 10 twice. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 6 twice. Nothing but 1's on the top, so that gives me 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Times 8 is 32. And I'm left with 1 32nd. Number 22 is today's lesson two and a half squared. So I take two and a half times two and a half. Make them improper. Multiply, add. Gives me five over two. This one also is five over two. Multiply the tops is 25. Multiply the bottoms is four. Divide, four goes into 25 six times. That's 24. 25 minus 24 is one. Denominators stay the same. Six and one fourth. I feel like we had that as one of our practice problems. Uh, 23 is today's lesson with a division problem. I have 1 and 3 fifths divided by 2 and 2 thirds. We're going to make them both improper. Multiply and add. 5, 8 over 5. Multiply 6, 7, 8 over 3. Stays the same. Changes to multiplication. Flips over. That's so nice when they flip over. The eights are gone. Three on top, five on bottom. And I have an answer of three fifths. Number 25, another one from today. I take five. I'm going to write it over one times one and three fourths. Five over one times multiply four plus set three is seven fourths. I look, I can't cancel anything, so I multiply the tops. 35, multiply the bottoms, 4. Now I have to divide. 4 goes into 35 8 times. That's 32. 35 minus 32 is 3. 4 stays the same. 8 and 3 fourths. 26, name each property that does these things. Okay, so I got 3 halves times 2 thirds x equals 5 6. Next, they wrote 3, 2 times 2, 3 times x equals 5, 6. Notice the order stayed the same. The grouping changed, guys. That's your associative property. Different things in parentheses. Then they did this math right here, guys, and they got 1x equals 5, 6. This right here, any fraction times its reciprocal equals 1 is called the inverse property. When it equals 1, it's inverse. Now the last step, x equals 5, 6. Now I'm multiplying by 1. When I multiply by 1, that's the identity property. So guys, the inverse to identity one, they're going to do a lot with you. Um, in these steps to completion. Last is number 30. The central angle of a half circle is 180 degrees. The central angle of a quarter circle is 90. How many degrees is the central angle of an eighth of a circle? Well, you got two choices. Choice number one, I could take 90 and so we keep cutting these things in half, so I just cut it in half by dividing by two. Goes in there four times, that's eight. One bring down is 10, goes in there 45. Your other choice is a circle is 360. I'm doing one eighth of it, so I divide by eight. And you'll see it's going to give you the same exact answer, 45 degrees. Okay, good thing to memorize. 
you were doing one eighth, so then you multiply by one. Good thing to memorize as we work with these circles. But anyway, you look at it, the answer is 45 degrees. It's just if you want to do half of a half of a half, or if you want to do 